Okay, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, before the starting the session, uh, myself, Dr. Parath Bhura. Uh, uh, hello, am I audible to all of all? Yes. yes sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good uh, good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Parath Bhura, Assistant Professor of Bits and Stuff Physiotherapy. Welcome you all <coughs> in today's webinar on pain modulation and selection of electrotherapy modality for pain relief. Management of pain at various levels, such as peripheral level, spinal segment level, supraspinal level, and the cortical level, are explained by the neurophysiological and non-neurophysiological theories to provide the basis for using a few electrotherapy modality in theory. Now, let us learn in more detail for our today's presenter, Dr. Ashish Kakkar sir. It's my privilege to inter introduce my senior friends and today's speaker, Dr. Ashish Kakkar sir. PhD scholar, MPD in neurological uh, condition. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, uh, he is currently working as an associate professor at SPB Physio Physiotherapy College, Surat, having more than nine years of teaching experience. He is also the member of Board of Academics of Gujarat State Council for Physiotherapy. I really feel proud to say that he is an author of book, Fundamental of Electrotherapy and Biomedical Physics. And again, he is the launcher of mobile application in the Google Play Store named a Stroke Rehabilitation Predictor. Before starting the session, I would like to request all the participants to mute the microphone to avoid the disturbance. If you have any questions during the session, please type in the message chat box. We'll have the question answer session at the end of the session. Now, without wasting much time, we will turn the time to the presenter I would like to request Dr. Asis Kakkar sir to start with the session. Over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. All audible. Hello, am I audible? Someone please answer in chat box. Yes, sir, audible. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Dear participant, there are two accounts of uh, Asis Kakkar, sir. Uh, you can pin to that account if you are using the laptop. Click on the Asis Kakkar, sir's uh, icon and you can pin to screen. Then uh, the sir's screen will be visible to all of you. There are two accounts of Asis Kakkar, sir. Okay. Finally, we are starting with today's session. Okay. So, First of all, before I start the lecture, I would like to thank Principal Sir of uh, Beats Institute of Physiotherapy, Dr. Jadav Sir, Vice Principal Sir, Dr. Sarfaraz Sir, and uh, Dr. Paras Bura Sir for today's moderator. So our today's topic is pain modulation and selection of electrotherapy modality for pain relief. 
now let us start with pain so what is pain so pain it is unpleasant and emotional sensory experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage so actually pain is affecting our emotion many times our mood will be off for example if i am having back pain and somebody is asking me that would you like to come for a movie definitely my answer will be no that you people go i don't want to come because i have back pain okay sometimes we have seen that many patients they are literally crying why because of pain so ultimately it is affecting our pain uh, that is affecting our emotion it is unpleasant also nobody will like the pain okay we have never heard that yesterday i was having back pain and i enjoyed it a lot or uh, the day before yesterday i was having headache and i liked it a lot okay it is not pleasant okay it is always unpleasant and it is not just a sensation it is one type of the sensory experience okay for example if i have fall in any corner of the city so i have fall i have injury i will be having pain for 8 10 days or 15 days now if i am passing from that corner of the city even after 6 months or 12 months i will be remembering that corner and that pain why because it is not just a sensation like touch and temperature it is one type of this sensory experience okay so when this experience occurs so whenever i have any damage to my tissue clear now what is the purpose of the pain why the nature has designed our body in such a way that we can feel the pain so the primary purpose of the pain is to protect the body clear it is one type of the alarming sign it is one type of the warning sign for example if i talk of myself my students know uh, actually before 6 12 months okay i was having knee pain whenever i was climbing the steps okay so i assessed and i found that there was no any problem with the knee joint it was because of my weight then i started reducing my weight and ultimately i was able to get pain relief why so pain was started in knee joint okay so it was one type of the alarming sign then if i am not doing anything definitely i am going to damage my knees clear so here i need to take care of my knees and to take care of my knees i need to reduce my weight clear so pain it is one type of the protecting mechanism it is one type of the alarming sign it is one type of the warning sign clear so in that case i should respect the pain i should not ignore the pain clear so primary purpose of the pain it is to protect the body now what are the factors those are affecting our pain perception so the pain perception it is like reception will be same but the perception will be different for example if i am giving 100 rupees to three different students so one student may tell okay sir give me 100 rupees okay second student okay she will be okay with 100 rupees okay and third student okay sir give only 100 rupees so what is the meaning of telling this example for first student 100 rupees is more amount for second student it is okay for third student 100 rupees it is less amount clear so amount received is same but still the perception is different okay the perception is different so it is nothing but your psychological factor clear so if you are having strong psychology you will be feeling pain less if you are having weak psychology you will be feeling pain more clear so this is nothing but your psychology so even though two patients they are having same amount of the pain their perception will be different clear now previous experience so whenever you are giving paraffin wax bath so we have seen that females they are able to tolerate more temperature as compared to males why because females they are having exposure or experience of touching this hot objects especially when they are cooking clear but males they are not having that much exposure to touch this all types of the uh, equipments clear so previous experience of particular pain will increase the threshold of that particular type of the pain and definitely the next time the pain will be felt less now social factor so it is written that uh, you are average of five people among which you live most of the time clear so if you are living in strong society like you have good strong friends you have good strong family members you have good relatives so in that case you will be also strong let me tell you example of army person clear like wife of the army person or the children of the army person they have not received any type of the training 
but still just because they are living with uh, this uh, army people they are also very strong they are not uh, giving more importance to the pain clear so that is social factor okay so your atmosphere your society your family members your relatives your friends they will also make you uh, di uh, feeling differently for pain now the cultural so for example if you are living in the city so we are wearing footwear slippers even in the bathroom but the villagers they are not uh, wearing even footwear in the farm or field clear why because the culture is different okay the villagers they are complaining less of the pain as compared to uh, citizens of city clear so these all are the cultural difference few caste they are having uh, less response to pain few caste they are having more response to pain so this is nothing but our culture so all these factors collectively affect the perception of pain clear perception means what is your response to pain okay so even though the intensity of the pain is same your response will be different clear now there are two types of the pain fast pain it is also known as first pain and slow pain it is also known as second pain now what are the difference between these two so fast pain it is carried by a delta fiber and slow pain it is carried by c fibers now sensory uh, nerve fibers they have classification from a alpha a beta a gamma a delta b and c clear so i told you from uh, highest to lowest nerve conduction velocity wise means a alpha is having highest nerve conduction velocity and c fibers they are having lowest nerve conduction velocity clear pain is specially carried by a delta and c fibers clear now when the fast pain occurs so it is during the injury for example if my finger is blocked between the two doors so at the time of this block whatever uh, pain i am feeling that is fast pain now the finger will be unblocked by me okay so now the finger is not between the two doors okay so just by removal of this finger i will not be pain free even after unblocking of my fingers i will be having pain okay so that is after injury so fast pain means it is during injury for example if i fall so at the time of fall it is during injury it is fast pain now even after fall is okay fall is finished but after that also i will be having pain for few days so that is after injury now definitely during injury the pain will be more severe and after injury the pain will be less severe clear so fast pain it is more severe slow pain it is less severe now this is a tract for uh, pain transmission that is nothing but lateral spinothalamic tract now whenever i am taking class so at that time i am specifying that this tract is present in male as well as female because some bollywood directors they have told that mard ko kabhi dard nahi hota but it is not like that okay mard ko bhi dard hota hai so they are also having lateral spinothalamic tract let us understand this uh, in brief for example these are the free nerve endings so free nerve endings uh, they are receptors for this uh, pain transmission okay then along with the free nerve endings you will be having peripheral nerve it is known as first order neuron and uh, after this first order neuron it will make synapse with second order neuron so this is your second order neuron it is nothing but lateral spinothalamic tract most of the time uh, tract name is from let uh, second order neuron only then this is your third order neuron so second order neuron will terminate at ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and from that ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus the fibers will be going to different parts of cerebral cortex okay and ultimately they will be reaching to post central gyrus of parietal lobe now post central gyrus of the parietal lobe it is the final center for receiving this pain so impulse will start from receptor that is pre nerve ending then first order neuron then second order neuron third order neuron and finally reaching to post central gyrus of parietal lobe now once they reach post central gyrus of the parietal lobe then and then it will be felt at conscious level clear so if i am able to stop pain at any level like before it reaches to uh, pre nerve endings that is receptor as parasar told peripheral level or if it reaches to first order or second order neuron okay so that is at this final level i am stopping the pain okay and if it is uh, stop at the third order level or before it reaches to post central gyrus of parietal lobe if i am able to stop that pain at any level patient will not be feeling pain so uh, different causes of the pain that also we need to consider ischemia so that is lack of blood supply best example uh, 
ischemic heart disease so whenever you have heart attack you will be paining, uh, <coughs> you will be having severe pain in your chest so that is nothing but ischemia then chemical stimuli so for example accumulation of the lactic acid so that is nothing but one of the chemical stimuli okay so that is giving pain then spasm so spasm is one type of the involuntary contraction of the muscle okay so that will be also giving me pain if i have done excessive work then comes mechanical for example fracture or back pain or knee pain and last it is polymodal polymodal means it is combination of any of this above now referred pain so referred pain means the pain is originated somewhere else and it is felt at somewhere else clear so funny example i would like to give that uh, if the boyfriend has pain and it will be felt by girlfriend so it is example of the referred pain but here we are talking of the same single body so many times it is possible that the pain of the uh, diaphragm will be felt over the right shoulder so why it happens because of neurilemmal tube so whenever the embryo is growing at that time if the two organs they are developed from same part of the neurilemmal tube so they will be sharing common nerve supply clear for example diaphragm is also having a uh, nerve supply of c34 and uh, right shoulder it is also having nerve supply of c34 so if the pain is coming from diaphragm brain will be perceiving that pain is coming from right shoulder why because they have common nerve supply clear so the pain of the diaphragm will be felt over the right shoulder pain of the heart will be felt over the left side of the chest as well as uh, left side of the arm okay <clears throat> then gold bladder pain will be felt over the epigastrium region kidney pain will be felt over the loin ovary pain will be felt over the umbilicus and testis pain will be felt over the pubic region so the dermatomal rule is responsible for this referred pain so the deep pain will be transferred to superficial area like diaphragm pain will be felt over the right shoulder but the right shoulder pain will not be referred to diaphragm clear the reason as i told you that two uh, organs they are developing from same part of the neurilemmal tube now substance p it is responsible for this pain transmission across the synapse now coming to pain control mechanism okay so this is the main part of uh, today's lecture so pain modulation can be done by three ways one is by heat okay second is by cold and third it is by masking the pain by using different currents so if we consider the heat so heat can be further classified into superficial heat and deep heat superficial heat is further classified into conduction convection and radiation so conduction means the heated particle will give heat to nearby particle okay so that is known as conduction okay for example if you give paraffin wax bath or hot pack so paraffin wax bath and hot pack they are having more temperature okay so just because they are heated they will transfer heat to nearby tissue clear so they are working on the principle of conduction then comes convection so it is hydrotherapy and fluidotherapy so here the heated particles okay will be moving across okay and they will be hitting the nearby tissues clear so hydrotherapy fluidotherapy so the material or fluid itself will be hot and that will be spreading to other areas then radiation so it can spread without any uh, medium okay for example infrared or uvr so all these are uh, giving heat okay by passing without any contact okay so ir uvr microwave diathermy laser we are talking of laser scanner those will not be in contact with body but still they will be hitting your body part okay so superficial heat as we discuss it can be applied to the body by conduction convection or radiation okay then coming to the cold so in case of cold uh, it is not further classified you will be using ice packs or simple ice cubes okay or whatever types of the uh, cold you want to apply like uh, vasocoolant spray all these are examples of cold therapy cold therapy it is also known as cryotherapy okay now in case of uh, deep pain or deep heating we are using short wave diathermy and ultrasound and for masking pain we are using ift and tens so that is nothing but one type of the current we are using clear so we have to think that what we need to do we want to apply heat we want to apply cold or we want to mask the pain without using heat or cold okay and in terms of heat also whether you want to apply superficial heat or deep heat depending on that you can select the modality now 
as we discuss uh, pain can be stopped at any level clear for example if you think that uh, one criminal is going from jail to uh, court okay so if you stop that criminal before he or she reaches to the court and before the judgment from magistrate comes definitely you will not be having any decision to follow okay so you will not be punished why because you are stopping that criminal before he or she is reaching to magistrate clear so here also pain will be perceived only when it reaches to post central gyrus of parietal lobe if you want to stop the pain you can stop the pain at peripheral level means before there is a stimulation of the free nerve ending so that the receptors for pain clear either you can stop the pain there or you can stop the pain at the spinal level or you can stop the pain at the supraspinal level okay or you can stop the pain at cortical level clear anyhow we have to avoid the uh, conscious level perception of pain clear so let us understand for peripheral level so for example heat therapy and cold therapy they are best examples of pain control at peripheral level now what the heat therapy will do okay so it is again the same story whenever you give heat there will be vasodilatation because of this vasodilatation fresh blood will be coming to your a uh, treated area along with this fresh blood you will be having more number of uh, uh, this nutrients more number of uh, antibodies good amount of oxygen okay all this will be coming so this will be helpful for healing purpose this will be helpful for pain relief along with this supply of fresh blood the old blood that is uh, with west metabolites like lactic acid or any other chemicals those are already accumulated over the part that is giving you pain okay so those by products will be drained away from that side clear so with the heat therapy you are increasing blood supply to that part okay and you are draining the uh, part okay that is having accumulation of west metabolites clear now cold therapy how it will be working or cryotherapy so there will be vasoconstriction followed by vasodilatation so along with vasoconstriction and vasodilatation all the physiological changes will be happening of increase blood supply increase oxygen increase nutrients increase antibodies increase amino acids clear and ultimately removal of the west metabolites and you will be having pain relief clear now you will be having a uh, pain at the spinal level also so at the spinal level you will be having a uh, okay now at the spinal level pain gate theory so pain gate theory we have already uh, one image on this screen so it will increase your threshold so we have spinal cord you have to image in the transverse section of the spinal cord in the transverse section of the spinal cord we have lamina 5 in lamina 5 you will be having substantia gelatinosa so substantia gelatinosa it is having a uh, control over the t cells you can see in the figure so you can compare the substantia gelatinosa with polisman and t cells with thief so if the substantia gelatinosa is stimulated t cells will be inhibited like if the polisman is uh, stimulated okay thief will be inhibited so substantia gelatinosa it has inhibitory effect on t cells clear so t cells what is the function of t cells t cells they are wide dynamic range cells they will be allowing all the sensations to pass including touch temperature okay pain so actually what is happening pain sensation will have to travel from this t cells so anyhow if we want to inhibit the transmission of the pain we have to inhibit the t cell how to inhibit this t cell that is by stimulation of substantia gelatinosa how to stimulate substantia gelatinosa so that is by large diameter fibers clear so when you stimulate large diameter fibers so already the pain is created by a delta and c fibers that we uh, discussed clear so which are the fibers those are having more diameter as compared to a delta and c definitely a alpha a beta and a gamma so by giving ift or tens that is interferential therapy and transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation we are able to stimulate uh, this a beta fibers clear so when we stimulate a beta fibers it will stimulate the substantia gelatinosa stimulation of substantia gelatinosa will inhibit the t cell so the pain transmission will not be occurring further from the spinal cord clear so you are stopping the pain at the spinal cord level only okay now another is physiological blocking system so by giving transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation or cryotherapy 
what you will be able to do you will be able to reduce the no conduction velocity so that the pain will be traveling with the less conduction velocity and ultimately the patient will be feeling pain relief clear so all these are working at spinal level now pain has already crossed the second order neuron pain has already reached to third order neuron now what to do how to stop the pain so there are various mechanisms one is descending pain separation system it is also known as dpss commonly used as abbreviation dpss so just think by yourself if you are having injury okay and after injury uh, you are not treating yourself or you are not taking any type of the medicine you are not taking any type of the physiotherapy so is it like that your pain will be lifetime no it is not like that okay after a few days you will be having natural pain relief clear why because that is a stim uh, stimulation of dpss stimulation of this system dpss will release the serotonin and other opioid analgesics like enkephaline endorphin and dynorphin clear so these are nothing but natural analgesics for example you are purchasing analgesics from chemist store so here they are same clear so when you have injury and you will be tested for blood test you will be having uh, finding of this presence of all this natural opioid analgesics as well as serotonin now counter irritation so best example you are using uh, volini gel you are using mu you are using iodax okay so how they are working do you think that your pathology in the back will be treated by this balm or will be treated by this uh, uh, volini gel okay okay it is not possible that you will be able to introduce all this gel okay, to 2 to 3 cm deeper to the skin clear because for example if you think of the back pain so your pathology is 3 to 5 cm deeper from the skin so whatever you rub over the skin definitely it is not reaching to that part but it will be producing some irritating sensation superficially so superficial sensations will be reaching to your brain and because of the superficial sensations your deep pain will be masked clear so what you are doing all the parameters those are in your control in that way you are stimulating superficial irritation clear so only one sensation will be allowed to pass at one time so your superficial pain sensations they are reaching to brain okay but these all are the under control so as you are getting irritation from the superficial tissue you will not be getting pain from deeper tissues clear so that is known as counter irritation so you can use our transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation for counter irritation purpose now placebo so placebo means we are just using the psychology of the patient many time for example if the patient is having fever so in that case patient may tell you like as a doctor if uh, he is uh, uh, consulting any physician so they may tell that sir give me injection i don't want to take medicine and if the physician gives injection of even glucose patient will be having relief from the fever why because it is nothing but placebo okay patient's preference it is taken into consideration okay so that will be helpful to get the result clear so here the placebo will be also used many times we have tried also that uh, if the ultrasound machine is not working okay ultrasound waves they are not coming but still we have tried on few patients that light will be on uh, you will be having sound okay but ultrasound waves they are not coming so if we give ultrasound over the patient's tissue so on the next day patient is feeling relief why because the patient will be thinking that i have taken some treatment okay and just because of patient psychology you will be having pain relief clear so take advantage of patient's placebo also patient's belief you take as an advantage then cortical level cortical level means the pain has already reached to your post central gyrus of parietal lobe now what to do now how to control because the body has or brain has already known that pain is there now you just need to change your behavior if you are giving more importance to the pain you will be feeling more pain if you are giving less importance to the pain you will be feeling less pain clear then uh, second it is meditation so we all know that whenever we are doing meditation definitely we will be having diversion of mind from that pain to a good feeling clear so meditation will be also helpful to give you pain relief okay use of frank atmosphere so nowadays before 2 3 days only uh, there were videos in social media that uh, few uh, covid patients they are having the 
garba in the isolation wards so what is that it is nothing but one type of the prank atmosphere then laughter therapy so in case of laughter therapy you all have seen the movie munna by mbbs so dr astana was there who was using this laughter therapy so laughter therapy will release uh, serotonin okay so that will also give you pain relief clear so all these are working at cortical level cortical level means the pain has already reached to the post central gyrus of parietal lobe and you are giving pain relief now which modality is best so coming to the second part of our lecture which modality is best so to select good modality is as easy as to find the good road or correct road from this crossing clear now we will be having always confusion why because we are having multiple options for example if the patient comes to me and patient tells that i have knee pain okay so what i will tell or what i will think okay let me give short wave diathermy now just after this short wave diathermy decision i will be having another thought no let me try with microwave diathermy okay after that again i will be having third thought why not ift then again fourth thought tens also may work okay again i may think okay patient is having knee pain so ultrasound may be better okay so ultimately what is my status i am confused okay i am confused why because i had many options that's why i am confused okay so finally patient will be uh, dependent on us okay patient will ask us that finally what you will do what therapy you will be giving so my answer should be i will go with evidences there should be evidence that whatever it is proved by the research that i should follow clear so now we are uh, going through a few researches and uh, almost all the modalities i have compared i have done uh, google search okay by putting different uh, sessions or okay, different uh, modalities clear most of the modalities are covered so when we are comparing short wave diathermy and that is continuous short wave diathermy and pulse short wave diathermy so it was proved by the research that pulse short wave diathermy was found to be more effective than continuous short wave diathermy when it was checked on low back pain okay uh, at the end of this statement you can see the reference okay the reference of each statement is given now whenever we have choice between the short wave diathermy interferential therapy and tens so what to select so whenever physical therapy any agent out of this three like short wave diathermy or ift or tens when it is selected along with the exercise and educational program educational program means it is the list of do's and don'ts clear so there was no significant difference that was between tens ift and short wave diathermy for pain relief okay it was also checked on osteoarthritis knee patient clear so when you have choice among short wave diathermy ift tens it is up to you what to select then short wave diathermy versus ultrasound so again the patient of osteoarthritis of knee when they were treated with short wave diathermy and ultrasound in two different groups no significant difference was found when the two groups were compared to each other clear now you can use short wave diathermy or ultrasound the reference it is already there in the slide now when you have uh, option between short wave diathermy hot pack and tens okay so you might be thinking that uh, sir is telling that no difference no difference no difference okay but it is not always like that you can have difference here so whenever you want to treat a patient with osteoarthritis or any other pain so there will be combination you go for hot pack as common and you combine this hot pack with short wave diathermy or hot pack with tens clear so either you think of hot pack with short wave diathermy or hot pack with tens now we have again a uh, comparison between short wave diathermy and this ultrasound okay and phonophoresis it is uh, one type of the uh, ultrasound with medicine generally we are using diclofenac you might be using volini gel volitra gel ice gel whatever you use it is up to you but when you see this when you see this uh, you will be having a uh, introduction of medicine clear so introduction of the medicine that is nothing but diclofenac okay so diclofenac is used in all this volini volitra or uh, ice gel so whenever you have option between short wave diathermy ultrasound or phonophoresis 
both are all these three they are having significant role clear so you can select any one of these three now short wave diathermy and microwave diathermy uh, they are not compared well okay they are not compared well so uh, there is no research that is telling that short wave diathermy is better or microwave diathermy is better now when short wave diathermy was compared with ir so short wave diathermy it is deep heating modality and ir it is superficial heating modality so here the difference is there short wave diathermy has better effect as compared to ir when it was checked on low back pain again you have reference at the end of statement in each slide now when we have choice between the tens and ift so tens and ift they are equally effective equally effective but again the preference will be as by therapist it will be decided if i speak personally i will be liking ift more as compared to tens why because in case of ift what i have observed that patients they are not uh, complaining of adaptation in case of tens the patients they are uh, adapting very soon okay so just because they are adapting very soon uh, they will be having uh, more and more intensity that will be required clear but otherwise effects wise both are same you can use ift and you can use tens also but for therapist convenience and for patient's preference you can think of ift as compared to tens why to avoid the accommodation because in ift we have special provision of sweep okay introduce sweep okay so you will be having sweep that will prevent this accommodation now when you have comparison between ultrasound and paraffin wax bath so it was found that ultrasound therapy was more effective as compared to paraffin wax bath so when you have choice between ultrasound and wax bath you select or prefer ultrasound so this study was checked on carpal tunnel syndrome and in both the uh, groups the, you uh, had this wrist orthosis so that is supporting device now ultrasound versus laser so ultrasound was found more effective as compared to laser in case of lumbar dystrophy that is nothing but low back pain clear so ultrasound is having a uh, better effect as compared to laser as well as paraffin wax bath now heat versus cold versus contrast so this is always debatable topic always debatable because if we tell our patient to use the heat therapy patient will tell no no my another doctor has told me for ice application if we give <coughs> advice for the ice pack patient may argue that so and so doctor has told me for heat therapy so what is final okay or what we should do so it is best that you give both the choice okay you can go with the heat therapy you can go with the cold therapy because here the preference will be also affecting patient's preference will be also affecting the result clear so in this study it was the interesting finding that pain reduction and improvement was there okay in one patients but response were greater with patient's preferred treatment clear so you give option you are free to do heat therapy you are free to do cold therapy whatever it is preferred by you clear okay now midway is also there you can think of contrast now contrast bath it is not always taking two bowls one will be filled with hot water one will be filled with cold water you can apply cold and heat alternatively like for example if i am giving heat therapy for 1 2 minutes then i am giving cold therapy for 1 2 minutes again heat therapy for 1 2 minutes again cold therapy okay so this is also known as contrast bath clear so here the patient's preference it is very important as per research now again how to select hot and cold okay so every time it is not like that both are applicable sometimes hot is contraindicated sometimes cold is contraindicated so what are this difference so the difference uh, they are already explained okay so we are discussing so cold will reduce the inflammation and thereby reducing the pain as well as swelling inflammation has five signs that you know Uh, it has pain swelling tenderness loss of function and redness clear so out of all this five signs it is reducing your pain as well as it is reducing your swelling also so whenever you want to give in acute condition that is within days within 48 hours of within uh, uh, 48 hours of injury you think of this cold therapy okay heat will uh, promote the blood flow okay so definitely it will relax the muscle so you should use the heat therapy for chronic pain so in short acute injury think called 
ओके क्रॉनिक इंजरी थिंक हिट क्लियर ओके हिट थेरापी विल बी मोर यूजफुल फॉर स्टिफनेस रिलीफ क्लियर सो वेन एवर यू आर थिंकिंग टू अप्लाई दिस हॉट और कोल्ड नियर ज्वाइंट सो हॉट थेरापी विल बी बेनिफिशियल एज कम्पेयर टू कोल्ड वाई बिकॉज कोल्ड मे इंक्रीज द स्टिफनेस क्लियर ओके बट हिट एंड क्रायो बोथ आर यूजफुल फॉर पेन रिलीफ ओके सो फॉर पेन यू हैव बोथ दी ऑप्शन हिट एज वेल एज कोल्ड but depending on patient stiffness depending on patient's acute or chronic status of the injury you decide whether you should go with hot therapy or cold therapy or cryotherapy clear or you can use alternating heat and cold that is nothing but contrast bath clear so that will be also reducing the muscle pain okay most of the time whenever you're using this heat therapy or cold therapy you should take care that you are avoiding direct contact with your skin clear so whatever you are giving hot or cold avoid direct contact with skin because skin is very sensitive there are chances of skin burn or frost bite now conclusion what should i do so always we have to use our wisdom okay we have to use the evidences we have to consider patient's parameters okay there are multiple parameters okay but for example we are discussing one parameter for example if you want to treat elbow pain so elbow is smaller area okay so you can think of ultrasound because the placement of uh, short wave diathermy and it is not possible okay so patients area of treatment it is small okay if you think of the back so back is somewhat larger so definitely the ultrasound head will not be proper okay to cover the whole area of the back pain okay because back pain it is also including the paraspinal muscles and all so definitely it will be difficult to cover this patient's back area with ultrasound head clear okay then uh, now uh, patient's area is still larger for example patient is having lumbar radiculopathy like patient is having back pain as well as affection of lower limb clear so in case of just short wave diathermy will not be sufficient to uh, cover the back as well as lower limb okay so in that case you should cover back you should cover Uh, this lower limb also so for that diathermy is not a better option you can think of if because you have four electrodes and this four electrodes will be covering your uh, back as well as lower limb then therapist convenience so many times uh, you will be having issues of availability like microwave diathermy it is very costly laser it is also very costly so instead of uh, thinking of microwave diathermy or laser okay you can think of other options okay like short wave diathermy or ultrasound or paraffin wax bath yeah so you can have some alternative modalities because there are multiple factors those therapists will have to think on so finally based on patient's parameters and therapist convenience you have to select the electrotherapy modality oh, various uh, terms for uh, this uh, pain relief okay or related to pain so one is allodynia so it is pain perceived from non noxious stimuli like touch temperature so even if somebody is touching you will be feeling pain instead of touch then analgesia so that is loss of pain causalgia so that is painful burning sensation along the distribution of nerve then dysesthesia so that is nothing but touch sensation is perceived as pain allodynia it is including all other sensations like touch pressure etc okay and the term is used allodynia dysesthesia means only touch is included in this terminology so touch will be perceived as pain hyperalgesia so that is increased sensitivity to pain hypoalgesia so that is decreased sensitivity to pain paralgesia means it is abnormal pain sensation so all these are different terminologies of the pain those will be used in your case papers now penetration depth many times the students are asking the question that what will be the penetration depth so here it is the list based on evidence only that microwave diathermy will be having penetration depth of 6 to 8 cm phonophoresis so that is nothing but uh, use of ultrasound for introduction of medicine so that will be having penetration depth up to 5 cm ultrasound with 1 megahertz will be having penetration depth of 5 cm ultrasound with 3 megahertz will be having penetration depth up to 2 cm short wave diathermy 2 to 3 cm and sometimes even it is passing throughout the body so that is uh, even more hot packs heating pads paraffin wax bath infrared and fluidotherapy all these are penetrating less than 1 cm 
and different therapeutic effects okay so different therapeutic current so based on skin resistance if the skin resistance is more you will be having less penetration then it depends on frequency also more the frequency less the resistance so more the penetration clear more the frequency more the penetration then electrode placement so if the electrodes they are placed nearer to each other the penetration will be less and if the electrodes are away from each other penetration will be more why because if the electrodes are away from each other there will be more spreading of the field now this uh, particular lecture is made from this particular books okay essentials of medical physiology by k sembolingam electrotherapy explained by loendred then amphed neurological rehabilitations and fundamentals of electrotherapy and biomedical physics for further reading you can refer all this websites so material is taken from all this website to prepare this lecture and uh, further you can uh, see in the youtube also i think that whatever i told that is not like this is whatever i spoke to you it is useful it is not wasted like whatever it is shown in this figure if you have any question you can ask Uh, thank you so much, Ajit sir. Uh, sir, we have one question from uh, Arslan Sir. Why pulse shortwave diathermy is more effective? See, pulse shortwave diathermy. It is basically, uh, as we know, it is giving in pulse. Like uh, there will be on period and off period, so there will not be accumulation of heat. Okay. So as there is no accumulation of heat. definitely it will be taking uh, or it will be advantageous for proper vasodilatation okay many times what happens that there will be excessive heat so instead of uh, drainage and instead of providing good nutrients and oxygens and antibodies okay the body will be uh, concentrating more on heat dissipation means whatever the heat is produced the body will try or energy of the body will be wasted to disperse that heat so it will not be working more on Uh, vasodilatation or it will not be working more on uh, this drainage of the system clear on the contrary the system or energy will be diverted towards uh, heat dissipation means uh, heat will be dispersed or heat will be uh, made away from that original site okay as well as for pulse shortwave diathermy there are no contraindications also because there is no uh, concentration of field clear in case of pulse shortwave diathermy there is no concentration of heat clear so in that case in uh, pulse wave shortwave diathermy that will be beneficial as compared to continuous shortwave diathermy yes sir thank you uh, thank you sir we have we have a question from rupan patel can you can tell me counter irritant and impact of application of superfusion applications like volani bar etc counter irritation you want to understand counter irritation no okay so uh, understand like that our nervous system it is having only one way traffic okay you might be knowing bell magend is low clear so there will be always one way traffic and only one uh, sensation will be allowed to pass at one time clear so actually what is happening if you are giving the diclofenac so that is nothing but counter irritant so this counter irritant uh, will be stimulating your superficial sensation okay this counter irritant will be producing superficial sensation but this superficial sensation will be perceived by your brain so brain cannot receive two uh, sensations simultaneously clear so brain is busy in receiving this superficial sensation so at the same time whatever the deep pain it is coming from uh, the deeper area or area of uh, pain origin that will be masked because pain is busy to receive only one superficial sensation at a time okay uh yes sir now we have another question from abhishek pande in case of hysteric pain which modality are used so hysterical pain it is one type of the organic pain so don't think of any modality try other ways 
instead of electrotherapy modality. So there is one another question from Krupa Patel. As heat is helpful for relieving stiffness, then why some therapists are using cold packs in stroke patient for reducing the spasticity and stiff limb and joints? Okay, a very good question. Actually, whenever we are talking of stiffness, we are talking of joint stiffness, clear? Because uh, in winter, by the use of air condition, we will be increasing joint stiffness. Why? Because uh, whenever we are using cold, okay, so when the cold is outside, so atmospheric temperature will be low. Whatever the pressure inside the joint, that is already more because of inflammation, clear? So if you think of the pressure within the joint, so that is more. If you think of the pressure outside the joint, so that is less, clear? So definitely the part will be swollen more. You can think of this counterbalance effect. Okay, pressure from inside is more, but pressure from outside is less. Ideally, both should be equal. Okay, both should be equal. But if you are thinking that you are giving uh, hot, okay, so it is possible that by giving this hot, you are uh, increasing this uh, coldness. Oh, sorry, you are increasing this uh, inflammation, clear? So whenever we are thinking of stiffness, okay, especially of joint stiffness, so if you are giving hot from outside, so definitely it will increase blood supply, okay? And uh, it will reduce your stiffness from joint level. But when you think of spasticity, okay, so you are talking of excessive muscle tone. So in that case, icing will reduce this continuous firing. Why the spasticity occurs? Because of continuous firing. So in case of this continuous firing, definitely the ice will reduce the nerve conduction velocity or will reduce the frequency of this firing. So spasticity will be relieved, clear. But when you think of joint, definitely you think of heat. Don't think of cold because as I discussed, cold may increase this pressure from inside. Okay, so there will be uh, stiffness that will increase. Okay, it will also reduce the viscosity of this uh, synovial fluid. So by reducing the viscosity of synovial fluid also, it will increase the stiffness. So in short, if you want to summarize, whenever you think of joint, okay, think of hot therapy, okay, and whenever you think of uh, spasticity, okay, spasticity is present in muscle, not in joint. Yeah, so when you think of spasticity, apply cold. So for joint, hot therapy, for spasticity, that is for muscle, you go with uh, this uh, cold therapy. Yes, sir. There is another question uh, from Anushka Vangera. Uh, to reduce the pain, our modality is more effective prior to manual therapy or exercise or after the treatment session? So this, will work. this will work in both the ways. For example, if you want to activate the muscle more, you give electrotherapy modality prior to exercise because uh, by giving this electrotherapy modality, you will mask the pain and uh, with masking of this pain, patient will be uh, doing exercise in a better way, clear? And it is also possible that after exercise, the inflammation or pain has increased. So whatever the pain has increased or inflammation has increased after this exercise to suppress that pain, you think of electrotherapy modality uh, giving after the uh, exercise, clear? So if you are giving before exercise, you are giving warm up or you are giving a masking of the pain to make the exercise better. Okay, and after exercise, if you give, so you are working on reduction of the pain, whatever it has been aggravated because of your exercise. Uh, sir, one, another question from Dr. Uh, Dharmesh Contractor. Uh, contractor. He is uh, again uh, faculty of physiotherapy. Physiotherapy. Uh, uh, regarding to this continuous shoulder diathermy, uh, he is asking, can we use on chronic lower back pain? If so, how long we can use the short wave diathermy? We can give a uh, continuous short wave diathermy in chronic low back pain also, but it should be for a longer time, like 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. So I think that how long you are asking for how many minutes or how many days. So I'm answering in both the ways. If you want to give in one session, you can think of giving short wave diathermy for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And for how long, 
so it is up to you because all this therapy will be giving temporary pain relief only once you think that uh, patient has good amount of the pain relief you can discontinue in between okay and uh, if it is aggravating again you can again start because chronic pain it's not like that it is always of same intensity clear so when the chronic pain is more you can think of few sessions of diathermy once it is uh, controlled you can again uh, stop okay again you can start later on yes sir. yes sir uh, uh, more question from dr kiran gosai and chaitanya patel it is related to tens and iot which modality with the better in the treatment of radicular pain iot or tens 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 iot no actually it's not like that ift and tens one is for localized pain one is for radiating pain clear but uh, definitely if preference is given to me i will prefer ift why the reason as i told uh, that uh, because of this tens continuous application patient will be adapted so what will happen that even if you give maximum intensity patient will not be feeling intensity clear but uh, in case of ift you have provision of this sweep so in case of sweep introduction you can prevent this adaptation clear and uh, because of ift ift is medium frequency and by interference of two medium frequency there will be a uh, generation of low frequency so definitely because of high frequency of ift as compared to tens the penetration depth will be more okay so that is advantage one of ift over tens advantage two of ift over tens so that is introduction of sweep okay so by this sweep you will be having uh relief from adaptation okay so patient will not be adapted to whatever the current that is given but effect wise both are same so if you can control this two okay so effect wise ift and tens both are equally effective okay i hope that you got this uh, point clear so our control wise we have to prefer ift as compared to tens but effects wise both are same okay okay uh, one, uh, one more question, question from bhumika khandwani which therapy should be used should when be patient has acute low back pain and how long so for uh, acute uh, back pain we have to use cold therapy especially for first 2 3 days and even if you are giving heat therapy later on it should be for a small period of time like 10 to 12 minutes or maximum 15 minutes that's it another question from uh, kirti the radiating pain is treated by pen lumbar radiculopathy causes radiating pain from the from lumbar spine so why iit see as i told it is up to you whether you want to use tens or ift it is up to you but as we discuss there are two points or two advantage of ift or tens so ift is having more penetration depth as well as you can introduce sweep also by that uh, two uh, points only you can give more preference to ft otherwise both are same it is up to you what to choose uh, another question from hiral sonani ma'am any side effect on electro modality yes so electro uh, all the electro modalities they are having some side effects like short wave diathermy they can lead to burns okay like if you think of the ir so there will be iridema so all the different modalities whatever we are learning in electrotherapy they will be having their specific side effects okay so you need to refer all the side effects because we cannot elaborate side effects of all the electrotherapy modalities because here we are comparing only but definitely there will be side effects okay you should read all these side effects from the literature sir one question from uh, vijay sir in case of adhesive capsulitis which electrotherapy modality will be effective in case of adhesive capsulitis i think uh, short wave diathermy will be helpful but again we have to consider the diabetes because it is most commonly seen in diabetic patient so the sensations we have to consider if there is any issue of the sensation instead of using short wave diathermy you can think of ift or tens the question from uh, madhuri dindora ma'am difference between the long wave therapy or short wave diathermy short wave diathermy 
which is better sir long wave diathermy it is having frequency equal to ultrasound long wave diathermy it is having frequency of 1 megahertz short wave diathermy it is having frequency of 27.12 megahertz pulse short wave diathermy it is also having same frequency 27.12 megahertz but it is coming in pulses clear so i would like to say there is no any research or evidence Uh, which compares the long wave diathermy over this pulse short wave diathermy or uh, short wave diathermy so long wave diathermy it is having only one advantage so it is giving effect like ultrasound only but here the patient will be also feeling heat in case of long wave diathermy that is lacking in ultrasound because both are having same frequency 1 megahertz clear so you can think like that long wave diathermy it is having one advantage over ultrasound okay but uh, we cannot say with uh, evidence that long wave diathermy is uh, more effective as compared to pulse short wave diathermy or short wave diathermy okay so again it is up to patient's parameter and therapist preference uh, sir there are uh, uh, many questions but uh, sir, uh, because of time limit we'll uh, see one or two more we'll uh, see one or two more what is the difference between allodynia and what is the difference between allodynia and dysesthesia is that yes see allodynia means any sensation it may be touch temperature will be perceived as pain and dysesthesia means touch will be perceived as pain that's it uh, sir which modality is good for wound healing uh you can try with laser and uvr uvr gives very good results laser also they are giving but uh, cost factor you have to think uvr will be cheaper treatment as compared to laser Uh, uh, sir, sir one question from vijay sir, sir. for labor pain is it electrotherapy useful or not yes definitely it is useful uh, there are various literatures uh, those are explaining the role of tens in labor okay so labor pain will be felt less by the use of tens transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation Uh, sir one more question from sagar sir sir can we expect uh, uh, sorry sorry sir yes uh, definitely sir sir uh, we will plan the another uh, session for parameters like duration frequency and intensity right uh, so almost we have covered all all uh, questions and answer uh, thank you so much all participants uh, thank you ashish sir for spending your valuable time and uh, being with us uh, for sharing your knowledge and experience with the topic of therapy now uh, i would like to say thanks to our founder president and chairman sri jagdish bhai patel sir our joint managing trustee shrimati kamal ben j patel ma'am our chairman Sri Guru J Patel sir, for their constant support and motivation. I also like to thank our director sir, Sri S K Patel sir, for inspiring the staff members for devoted work. I extend my thanks to our principal, Dr. Mehul Jadhav sir, Vice Principal, Dr. Sarfraz Nawaz sir, our faculty member. for uh, this uh, uh, helpful for uh, this this event i also, I also would like, like to say thanks to all of them madam as well as computer department and i uh, for it support i would like to extend my gratitude to our gari dada for making this wonderful infographics design last but not the least i would like to say thanks to all the participants all my seniors my juniors some of our teachers and dear students for your presence and make this event a grand success once, once again thank you everyone uh, now uh, i will hand over to uh, ashish sir if you want to say something uh thank you so much to beats institute of physiotherapy vadodara uh, principal sir jadhav sir sarfaraz sir and paras sir 
for arranging this session thank you so much uh, thank you sir thank you so much uh, now over, over to uh, sir prakash sir we we'll conclude the session over here thank, thank you once again all, all the participants for uh, being, being with us, us. Thank, thank, thank you so much हेलो हेलो यस सर जादव सर वी आर हियरिंग यू या थैंक यू आशीष सर थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच या या इट इट इज अ वेरी गुड सेशन या 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 थैंक यू सो मच फॉर रिसीविंग आवर invitation huh, sir thank you so much no, no, it's it's my pleasure sir it's my pleasure yeah sir good day good day sir good day sir uh, sorry for some technical issues no problem sir no problem it's happened sir don't worry yes sir. okay sir thank you sir okay. thank you so much jadav sir thank you so much all faculty member rusikesh sir kami ma'am tejas sir and all other faculty member thank you so much for your support during this webinar thank you once again